Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 100. It's on transverse and longitudinal waves. And this is the Kola Super Deep Borehole. It's a covering over the deepest hole that humans have ever dug. The Soviets did this in the 1970s. They got around 40,000 feet below the surface of the earth. It got incredibly hot. They couldn't keep drilling, but it's really deep. If we were to look at the earth, however, that's barely scratching the crust. And so you might think to yourself, how do we know what the inside of the earth looks like if we've only been able to dig a little bit into the crust? Well, it's thanks to waves, seismic waves, waves produced through earthquakes. Some of those are transverse waves. Those are waves where the oscillation is perpendicular to the motion of the wave. And those ones, like all waves, can't make it through the solid inner core, but also can't make it through this liquid outer core. But the longitudinal waves, where their oscillation is in the direction of the motion, can still move their way through. So we're looking at those waves on the other side of the Earth to figure what the inside of the Earth looks like. And so waves are simply ways to transfer energy through disturbances or through oscillations. And they come in two forms. We have longitudinal waves. That's where the oscillation is in the same direction or parallel to the propagation or the movement of the wave itself. Uh, we also have transverse waves. In transverse waves, the motion in this case would be left to right, but the oscillation is going to be perpendicular to that. And so all of these can be mechanical waves. Mechanical waves, like the seismic waves in the Earth, require a medium. They require something to go through, and they could be longitudinal tra or transverse. However, electromagnetic waves, like the light that you're receiving right now, is only formed in transverse waves doesn't require a medium for it to move through. It can move through a medium, like right now it's moving through the air inside your room. An interesting characteristic of transverse waves is they can be polarized. And so we can use thin slits to only let certain transverse waves through. And so energy can be moved from point A to point B in two ways. It could be a particle that we simply fire a particle from A to B, and we could move B. But we could also use, in this case, a medium. And at point A, we could make oscillations, which would generate waves waves, if B is a piece of paper on that, it would float and move away. So we're transferring energy from one point to another, but there's no particle that makes it there. Remember that those waves can be either mechanical, so the waves we would find in an ocean or the waves of sound are all mechanical waves, but we can also have electromagnetic waves, and those electromagnetic waves can move through no medium. They can move through space where there's nothing. And so if you were to really see an explosion in space, you wouldn't hear it because there's no medium for those mechanical sound waves to reach you, but you would definitely be able to see it. And so the two types of waves are longitudinal. Longitudinal are waves where the oscillation or the dis disturbance is in the direction that the wave is moving. So you can see in this first animation that we've got the wave moving from left to right, and we also have the oscillations moving from left to right. Uh, example of this could be a pressure wave. An example of that could be like the sound waves that you're hearing right now. I'm vibrating the air, which is vibrating this microphone, which is vibrating your speaker, which is vibrating the air near you, and then you can hear that. But everything's in the same direction. If we were to look at this sim bucket simulation down below, the green particles as they move back and forth is transferring energy from left to right. That's that's represented by the dotted line right here, but you can see that the particles are moving in the direction that the wave is actually moving it. And so that's a longitudinal wave. What's a transverse wave look like? Well, I always think of the T in transverse. It tells me that it's going to be perpendicular to the motion. So if we were to do the same kind of uh, animation right here, again, the propagation or the movement of the wave is from left to right, but you can see that the oscillation is up and down. Example of this could be a rope wave if you attach a rope to a wall and just simply oscillate it, or light could be an example of that. If we look at a sim bucket simulation down below, this time we've got a rope wave. It's going from left to right, but note where the oscillation is. The oscillation is up and down. Another interesting thing is that the rope's not moving. It's the energy that's moving from one spot to another. It's not like the air moves. It's the energy moves through the air itself. And so one interesting thing about transverse waves is that they can come in many different directions and since it's perpendicular to the motion, we can have a grid or a slit or uh, some kind of a filter here that will only let transverse waves that are going in one direction through. 
And so polarized sunglasses work like that. This is an image uh, where we have no polarizer on the bottom. And so we're getting light in all directions. But then when we're using a polarizing lens at the top, then you can see the photographer on the inside because light is only coming out through the car itself. And so did you learn to use visual representations of longitudinal and transverse waves? Have you learned how to use a model to study them? And then in AP Physics 2, do you understand the importance of polarizing? as a way to limit only a certain direction of transverse waves moving through? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.